Cane toad. We're here in Australia. These things are causing huge problems. So today, I want to give you an introduction to invasive species. So by definition, an invasive species like this cane toad is any non-native organism that's causing big problems in its new habitat. Now, if you recognize any invasive species, you probably recognize the classic introductions. Lionfish, kudzu, Nile perch, to name a few. Some of these were misguided introductions, and some were introduced by accident. You might be surprised, though, to realize that the problem isn't getting better. In fact, if you graph the cumulative pests we've detected starting in 1650 until today, you'll notice that the curve shows no sign of slowing down. Now, here's the big question. Now that these organisms are here, what would you do about it? Is it worth continuing the fight to stop their spread? Or should we just throw in the towel and move on? Spend our money somewhere else? And the only way to answer this is to look at it from a few different perspectives. From perspectives that look at the big picture. From a biodiversity standpoint, invasive species are causing widespread extinction of native species. That alone is priceless. That's how I think as a biologist. But to some, they might say, this is the cost of a modernizing world. Shocking as that may be for me. For now, let's put this ethical argument aside. Let's take a more human-centric approach. How much are all of these invasives actually costing us? Turns out the economic impact in the US alone, according to a recent study, is estimated to cost about $137 billion a year. That's a lot, and definitely a large enough number to warrant some efforts to help reduce their costs, if we can. To go any further, I think we need to understand why invasive species are even a problem. So to help me out, I have this island, a little native bird, and then this rat, which represents an invasive species. Now, the reason invasive species cause more problems than, say, the native species on the island is that much of the time, they're here in an environment without checks and balances. Essentially, they've arrived without their usual predators, their natural enemies, aka like this cat here, and that allows them to multiply without check, eating through, say, all of the bird eggs on the island. But here's the thing, we can't just introduce their natural predators to help control them. I mean, we've learned that lesson, right? The cane toads were introduced to control insects, and they became huge pests in Australia. The mongoose were introduced to get rid of rats in Hawaii. They turned their eyes on the native bird eggs. In fact, the list of predators gone wrong is long. You might think we wouldn't want to switch one problem with another, right? Well, I'm gonna tell you now, it's not that simple. It's complex. Some work, are working, and will continue to work. And some haven't worked. But the fact still remains that invasive species are majorly screwing up the native ecosystems, and they're also costing us a great deal financially. Because of this complexity, let's take one species and look at it closer. The emerald ash borer. They're originally from Asia, came over by accident in cargo in the 1990s. It's a pretty bad bug, if you're an ash tree, that is. It bores through the inner bark and kills the tree pretty quickly. And that's bad news if you have a bunch of ash trees on your property. In fact, the ash borer has reached 25 states so far, causing 17 million ash trees to be replaced at an estimated cost of $10.7 billion. And that sounds like a lot, and it is. Is it worth it? The answer is yes. And that's because the existing ash trees in the forests of the US are valued at close to $287 billion. We obviously want to protect the rest of that resource, but how? First, you can't go around physically picking off these beetles. But scientists have found that you can treat the tree with an insecticide, either drilled and injected straight into the tree or added in a trench around the tree. That's the silver lining for people with giant ash trees in their yard, but it's not viable for forests. It would cost way too much. To help on this large scale, scientists have found a few parasitic organisms where it came from that only target this species here. Through years of testing, biologists are now certain that introducing them into the wild won't adversely affect the ecosystem. And this may be the most cost-effective approach if this biocontrol approach can limit the spread of the emerald ash borer and reduce their impact. Okay, now let's stop here with the emerald ash borer example. You may be thinking, wait a second, I'm pretty sure introducing another organism to battle this one is not a good idea. We've covered that, right? Well. 
No. Our well-intentioned ancestors of the past definitely screwed up with a few overzealous predator introductions. But today, the process of deciding to release a new predator is under much tighter scrutiny, usually taking years to make sure it is safe. If we look at the ecosystem as a whole, we have to choose from some tricky options. We're left with deciding whether we let them destroy everything, which is bad for both our native species and our wallets, or control them. Then we have to decide, do we spend money to physically pluck them out of the environment? Do we use chemical treatments? Or do we seek biological control? Or continued research might provide us with even better strategies in the future. All of these are tough questions that need an answer. With the Emerald Ash Borer, those are the options we have to choose from. But every species and every environment is probably going to be different. Sometimes it's not a matter of cost. But when it is, it's important to know your options. Also, just remember that the costs we incur to control these invasive species wouldn't exist if they weren't here. Essentially, what I'm saying is the cheapest way to reduce long-term costs from the next would-be invasive is to stop it from ever getting here. Remember, we don't seem to be slowing down in the rate of introductions. Not yet, anyway. The solution to all this isn't easy, and is possibly more complex than we can get into in this video introduction to the cost of invasive species. What I hope is that it gives you a few things to think about the next time someone proposes we just throw in the towel and stop spending money on invasives. You can simply remind them that invasive species management is more than just ethics, it's a financial game as well. Biting them isn't just making things better for our native species, but is making our environment healthy and saving us money in the long run. Thanks for watching, everybody. Later this month, I'm going to be heading into the field to see what researchers are doing to help control insects that are devastating the hemlocks of the Appalachian Mountains. The science is mind-blowing, and I think you'll enjoy the behind-the-scenes science that is going on to help protect our forests.